Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about the anatomy of ovary. So the ovary is an organ found in the female reproductive system that produces an ovum. So when an ovum is released, this travels down the fallopian tube into the uterus where it may become fertilized by a sperm. So this is how an ovary looks like. This right here is the fallopian tube and this here is the fimbriae. So in order to learn more about the ovary, let's get started. In this video, I will be enumerating an introduction about ovary. We will talk about the situation and position of the ovary in the human body, the external features and relations, the arterial supply, venous drainage, lymphatic drainage, nerve supply, functions, the histology of ovary and some important clinical anatomy related to ovary. Introduction The ovaries are the female gonads. Situation Each ovary lies in the ovarian fossa on the lateral pelvic wall. The ovarian fossa is bounded anteriorly by the obliterated umbilical artery, posteriorly by the ureter and the internal iliac artery. Position The position of the ovary is variable. In nulliparous woman, its long axis is nearly vertical, so that the ovary is usually described as having an upper pole and a lower pole. However, in multiparous woman, the long axis becomes horizontal, so the upper pole becomes laterally pointed and the lower pole becomes medially pointed. So right here you can appreciate an ovary of a nulliparous woman. This is the upper pole, this is the lower pole, and this right here is the uterine tube and this is the ligament of ovary. Likewise, this is horizontally placed long axis, uterine tube, suspensory ligament, everything can be appreciated. Let's move on. External features. In young girls, before the onset of ovulation, the ovaries have smooth surface which are grayish pink in color. After puberty, the surface becomes uneven and the color changes from pink to grey. Each ovary has two poles or extremities, the upper pole or tubal pole and the lower pole or the uterine pole. Two borders, the anterior or mesoarian border and the posterior or free border and two surfaces, lateral and medial. Relations First, let's talk about peritoneal relations. The ovary is almost entirely covered with peritoneum, except along the mesoarian or anterior border, where the two layers of the covering peritoneum are reflected on the posterior layer of the broad ligament of the uterus. This is the anterior and posterior layers of the broad ligament. The ovary is connected to the posterior layer of the broad ligament by a short fold of peritoneum called the mesoarium. This right here is the mesoarium. The squamous epithelium of the mesoarium is continuous with the cubical epithelium of the ovary. The mesoarium transmits the vessels and the nerves to and from the ovary. The lateral part of the broad ligament of the uterus extending from the infundibulum of the uterine tube and the upper pole of the ovary to the external iliac vessels forms a distinct fold known as suspensory ligament of the ovary or infundibulopelvic ligament. 
it contains the ovarian vessels and nerves so here you can appreciate an ovarian artery through the mesovarium this is the mesovarium this is an ovary this is the anterior border and this is the posterior free border this is an enlarged peak everything can be appreciated clearly right here moving on visceral relations number one upper or tubal pole it is broader than the lower pole and is related to the uterine tube and the external iliac vein the right ovary may be related to the appendix if the latter is pelvic in position the ovarian fimbria and the suspensory ligament of the ovary are attached to the upper pole of the ovary number two lower or uterine pole it is narrower than the upper pole and is related to the pelvic flow it is connected by the ligament of the ovary to the lateral angle of the uterus posterior inferior to the attachment of the uterine tube the ligament lies between the two layers of the broad ligament of the uterus and contains smooth muscle fibers number three anterior or mesovarian border it is straight and is related to the uterine tube and the obliterated umbilical artery it is attached to the back of the broad ligament of the uterus by the mesovarium and forms the hilus of the ovary posterior or free border it is convex and is related to the uterine tube and the ureter this right here is the uterine tube number five lateral surface it is related to the ovarian fossa which is lined by parietal peritoneum this peritoneum separates the ovary from the obturator vessels and nerve number six medial surface it is largely covered by the uterine tube the peritoneal recess between the mesosalpings and this surface is known as the ovarian bursa only the lower pole and the lateral surface are not related to the uterine tube remaining two borders upper pole and medial surface are related to the tube arterial supply the ovarian artery arises from the abdominal aorta just below the renal artery it descends over the posterior abdominal wall and enters suspensory ligament of the ovary this is the suspensory ligament it sends branches to the ovary through mesovarium and continues medially through the broad ligament of the uterus to anastomose with uterine artery this is the anastomosis and this is the uterine artery in addition to ovary the ovarian artery also supplies the uterine tube the side of the uterus and the ureter the uterine artery gives some branches which reach the ovary through the mesovarium venous drainage the veins emerge at the hilus and form a pampiniform plexus around the artery the plexus condenses into a single ovarian vein near the pelvic inlet this vein ascends on the posterior abdominal wall and drains into the inferior vena cava on the right side and into the left renal vein on the left side lymphatic drainage the lymphatics from the ovary communicate with the lymphatics from the uterine tube and fundus of the uterus they ascend along the ovarian vessels to drain into the lateral aortic these are the lateral aortic nodes and the pre aortic nodes
these are the pre aortic lymph nodes nerve supply the ovarian plexus derived from the renal aortic and hypogastric plexus accompanies the ovarian artery it contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves sympathetic nerves which are t10 t11 are afferent for pain as well as efferent or vasomotor parasympathetic nerves s2 s3 and s4 are vasodilator functions number 1 production of oocytes during reproductive life of about 30 years that is from puberty to menopause the ovaries produce ultimately one secondary oocyte per month that is per ovarian cycle of 28 days liberation of oocyte from the ovary is called ovulation it occurs on or about the 14th day of the 28 day menstrual cycle variations in the length of menstrual cycle are due to variations in the pre ovulatory phase the post ovulatory phase is constant anusite is viable that is it is capable of being fertilized for about 12 to 24 hours number 2 production of hormones estrogen is secreted by the follicular and paraluteal cells whereas progesterone is a hormone which is secreted by the luteal cells now let's move on to the histology of ovary histologically the ovary is made up of the following parts number 1 germinal epithelium of cubical cells which are derived from peritoneum number 2 tunica albuginea which is a thin layer of connective tissues number 3 the cortex contain ovarian follicles at various stages of development each follicles contains one oocyte one follicle matures every month and sheds an oocyte total of 400 oocytes are ovulated in the reproductive life after the oocyte is liberated the graafian follicle is converted into a structure called the corpus luteum the hormone estrogen is secreted by follicular cells of ovarian follicles another hormone which is progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum medulla has rich vascular connective tissue containing vessels nerves and lymphatics moving on to important clinical anatomy number 1 determination of ovulation in case of sterility the ovulation can be determined by repeated ultrasonography number 2 prolapse of ovaries ovaries are frequently displaced to the pouch of douglas where they can be palpated by a pv or per vaginal examination number 3 ovarian cyst the developmental arrest of the ovarian follicles may result in the formation of one or more small ovarian cyst multiple small thicker lutein cyst involve both the ovaries in case with stein leventhal syndrome the syndrome is characterized by mild hirsutism devoid secondary amenorrhea and cystic enlargement of both the ovaries number 4 carcinoma of ovary is common and accounts for 15% of all cancers and 20% of gynecological cancers number 5 ovaries are the commonest site in the abdomen for endometriosis the endometrial cysts in the ovary are called 
chocolate cyst. This is the picture of ultrasonography of ovary and this is to identify how a normal ovary looks like. This is how a cystic ovary looks like. This picture represents a healthy ovary and this one is an ovary with cancer. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.